Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to get started on removing the cylinder head and the cylinder and get to the piston and remove that. And so this is going to be a disassembly video and I may do an inspection on things as well. But uh, as you can see, I have the gas tank removed. I have the seat removed. The carburetor is taken out. So let's get started. First thing I want to do First thing I want to do is remove this cover. Three bolt, three screws. Okay. Now let's take this cover off. Probably going to be spending the most time right here. I do have my service manual with me just in case I need it. Alright, so now we have to remove the points. It says to remove the points and everything, but I'm going to try to leave those points alone. Oh, wait, before I do that, I'm going to mark this. It says to remove the points first, but uh, I'm going to try to take this whole plate off. And before I do, this, since this is the timing, it's probably not going to be... I need to redo it anyway, but... Just to... See, I'm going to put a little line with some white out. Right there. It's not much, but... It'll give me a little reference point. And then let's take these two screws out. Wow. I got those tight. Wow. I'm going to try to take this all out as an assembly. So I don't have to mess with the points because I did clean them and all that. Okay, slide that out. Now I can just move this out of the way. Okay, now we have to remove this in order to get this timing advance mechanism off of it. That looks like a 10. Maybe I can get this without holding the crank. I'll see. Yep. thing was supposed to come out. There it goes. That's on the end of the camshaft. And these things just slide in there. I guess it only goes in one way, so can't get it wrong. Well, I'll get that in there later. I have to open those things up. Put that to the side. Put the bolt to the side. Now we're up to the camshaft. Okay. Now I think next we need to take this off. Oh boy. Tight. Those are being a little tight, so we gotta use a 
pers little persuasion on it. Well, that doesn't fit in there too good. It's trying to strip it. That's why it's good to have a good assortment of tools when you're working on something. I think that's loose. Yeah. Ooh, that one was tight, tight. They both are tight, though. Yes, of course, I guess they need to be. I don't know if that's had thread locker on it or not. It might have. No? No thread locker on that. Looks like it's got a little spot right here that you could tap on and break the seal. I think this is supposed to have an O-ring on it to seal it. Yeah, it's got a large O-ring all the way around it. In case you're wondering where the bike is made. <laughs> take these caps off so I can watch the valve movement whenever I turn the engine over. This side, I'm going to take the spark plug out because I don't want to have to deal with the compression. So, a 13 sixteenths. Sorry, but my ratchet's kind of slipping. Move this up out of the way, too. Yeah, there's a spark plug. 
Got a little bit of oil on it. Okay, now this should turn over easily. I'm just going to watch the intake valve. Once the intake valve starts to move, and I'll be getting close. The intake valve just went down. Now it's down all the way. Now it's up. Oh, I should be getting close. Um, it says that you're supposed to line this line up. Let's see, which one was it on this? No? Oh, yeah, it is. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> well. You're supposed to line your KL250 up with this notch right here. I guess I should have done that beforehand, but I can line this up and get an idea of where it was at. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to hold the crankshaft bolt. I'm just going to try to break these loose. <clears throat> okay. Those cam bolts are broke loose. So what we're going to do, we're going to roll this around until I see the intake valve move. Okay, intake valve is just starting to move. Starting to come back up. Now I'm using a wrench on this so I can control that it just doesn't uh, take off on me. All right. Now I've got a mark right here where I need to line the timing up with the mark on the KL. And I'm almost there. Okay, right there should be the mark. Okay, now I'm timed. Top dead center compression stroke. Okay, I think the next thing I need to do is I need to relieve the tension off of the cam chain. So I will take my handy dandy little adjusting tool. Take that loose. Okay, now this is a cam chain adjuster. So what we want to do, we want to loosen this. Like that. And we want to run this all the way out. Take the tension off of the cam chain. Should be getting slack in it. I'm just going to go ahead and take it all the way out. That way I can inspect it and everything. And you guys might want to see what it looks like. So there's a cam chain adjuster. It's got a plunger on the end of it with a spring. As you can see, let me put this light up. As you can see, this rod goes all the way through the end of this adjuster. So when that pushes on that spring and pushes that rod, this, when it's adjusted correctly, it should be flush with the end of that hole. So that's the cam, cam chain adjuster. Yeah, our chain is good and loose now. So let's take our cam sprocket off. And try not to drop those bolts down inside the engine. 
Of course, they can't go too far. Well, I mean, they could, I guess. They'll go until they stop. Okay. So those two are out. Let's see if we can get this cam gear off of here. As you can see, it has markings on it. it says KZ200 and KL250 marks. So, got that off. So, let's take the tachometer cable out of the head. Okay, well, let's see if we can pull the camshaft out. Trying to hold on to the chain. You can see the speedometer drive gear on the end, of, or the tachometer drive gear on the end of it. Huh, the lobes have a little bit of wear on them. They're not super bad. So we're gonna put something on here to hold this chain from dropping down into the engine. That ought to hold it for now. All right, now let's take this bracket off. Only got three bolts holding it. Oop, that's turning on me. Okay. That one didn't have a washer. This one doesn't have a washer either. Okay, so that's got to be, just going to leave it on the bike because the wire is going through it. I could take that off, but don't need to. No sense in taking anything off that you don't need to. And there's the mount. Alright, so now we need to take this one. Looks like a 10 millimeter down here at the bottom off. And then there's just four head bolts the way it looks. I think those bolts go all the way down. I don't know how long. Surely they're not real long because it would hit coming out of there. I don't know. We will find out. All right, let's take this out. There we go, one ten, 10 millimeter bolt. And then that looks like a 14. 
And we'll take these all loose. Now on this side, I think I'm going to have to need a wrench. This side, I'm going to have to use a wrench, looks like. Wow. Just isn't much room in there. Okay. And then we'll take this back one loose. This is a lot easier with a socket. Might be able to get a short socket on that. I may have to. Let's see what I got. See if I can get this on there. Everything's loose, so I'm going to take this one all the way out. I think it says take the right side out first. Ooh, look at them bolts. Holy cow, it does go all the way down. There are some long bolts. Can't mix those up because I'm sure these are going to be short compared to those. Well, those aren't going to come out like that, so we're going to have to break the head free. So we've got to come down here, I think right here, and try to pry this up a little bit. side pull those out there we go those are long as well same size you just have to take them out in a little different method okay so now this I have to hold on to as I take the head off carbon build up <laughs> look at that Whew. yeah that definitely needs to be addressed okay so now we've got chain guide or yeah our chain guides All right. so that booger comes off goes off that side now we gotta pay attention that this drops down to a notch in the bottom of the motor, and this just sits in the top up here in the notch up here. Okay. Now, this should just need to be broke free. Let's see what we got. Oops, 
some dirt fell in there. Shoot. Let me get a rag. Hold this chain up a minute. All right, let's put a rag down here so we don't lose or get anything down here in the engine. Hopefully we won't get any dirt or anything in there. Okay, then we'll pull the cylinder off. Okay. Now I'm gonna tie this thing up again so I don't drop it. There we go. Looks like this one, this guide stays in the engine. It's probably got a pin in the bottom you have to remove. Well, I didn't have that piston all the way up, so I gotta go a little bit farther, I think. Right there. Okay. Now, put this down in here because we got to take these clips out. Get a little light on this here. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, now we got to take this sir clip out. tap that pin out there we go well it looks like it's got a dome piston we'll do a little inspection on that in a minute let's check this rod a little side to side which it's supposed to have but nothing up and down so that's good feels good and tight still that's a good thing and it looks like my gasket's all wasted so i'm gonna have to get another gasket unfortunately i'm gonna put this rag down in here because i'm gonna have to scrape this out whenever i go to do that won't be on this video, but I need to clean that out. Clean that gasket out of it. There we go. All right, let's do a quick inspection of our parts. This is the head. And as you can see, it's got a lot of carbon in it. It's got a pretty good hemispherical head on it. And it looks like the head's still good. Oh boy, it looks like this has got a O-ring right here. Or it's not really an O-ring, but a gasket right here. So I'm going to have to look into a top-end kit. Looks like it's got an O-ring right here, some sort of a gasket. And it's got a dowel pin that goes right there and there, it looks like. So, but I don't see any cracks. I don't see any problem with the head other than it's carboned up. Let's look in the exhaust port. See what it looks like. 
Oh yeah. You see that down in there? Let's see if I can get you closer. It's all carboned up. The intake side. It looks good and clean. So the head doesn't look bad, just needs a little cleaning, a little disassembly. Alright, uh, this is the cylinder. Now here's the two dowel pins I was telling you about. And the base gasket part of it's still on there. And it looks to me like the cylinder's got quite a bit of wear. Hmm. I was hoping that it wouldn't. It might be all right. I'm definitely going to hone it out and put my rings in it and check it. Looks like the uh, head gasket is just a ring right here. Hmm. That's the ceiling gasket for the head, looks like. And the cylinders doesn't really look that scored or anything, so. Now let's look at the piston. And you can see how much carbon's on the head of the piston. That all needs cleaned off. But I can see right now what the problem with the oil consumption was. Those oil, this bottom ring, this oil ring has collapsed. It's stuck. I mean, it's flush with the piston all the way around. It has no spring to it left whatsoever. Not like these compression rings. These compression rings still move and have compression in them. So, there's a little bit of play in that, but oh, there it goes on the, on the uh, oil ring. But it needs a new set of rings. Looks like the piston itself is in good shape. I don't think the skirts wore too bad. So I think we're in good shape. The piston pin feels nice and tight in here. That's a really good thing. Because uh, if something's wore, that's normally where it starts to wear that and then the rod. But that feels good, so I think we're in good shape with that. Just need a new set of rings and to hone it, and I think we're going to be in good shape. Okay, okay, that's going to do it for today's video. Uh, I got it disassembled. I got the parts all uh, inspected. I know what I need to do. So on the next video, I'll probably be honing out the cylinder and putting a new set of rings in. I have to order the gaskets and stuff that I need. I have rings, which is a good thing, but I need, I'm going to take the head apart and look at the valve seals, and I may have to order valve seals too, so I need to order that stuff, so it might be a little bit before I get back to this, but anyway, I, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe the video to, the, to my channel. I'd appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, it does help me, and I do appreciate you guys watching. Until the next time.